was about to become a father, he set out to find out where our food comes from. What he found may change your life. Please welcome the author of Eating Animals, Jonathan Saffron Fuller. You've written uh, two very uh, wonderfully successful novels, and then you find out your wife is going to have a baby, and you decide to go on a journey. And your intention was really to get a conversation going, right? Yeah, I mean, like most everybody, probably like most members of the audience, it occurred to me at a certain point that there's something about um, eating animals that made me uncomfortable. When I was a kid, it was just the simple realization that this piece of chicken that I'm eating is actually a chicken. And it sounds kind of naive now, but as a kid, that's a real revelation. And so the question stuck with me. And um, my instincts guided me to different habits. I'd been a vegetarian sometimes. Sometimes I ate whatever was put in front of me. But when my wife became pregnant and I faced the prospect of having to feed somebody else, which is not at all like feeding yourself, it just matters so much more, mm -hmm. um, I decided to take the question as seriously as I could. Mm -hmm. And uh, like me, you just said, I, I mean, I struggled with it. I was a vegetarian and I used to eat cheeseburgers all the time and steak and everything. I, I mean, I, I loved cheeseburgers and uh, couldn't imagine never eating them again. Um, and, and then I actually did some research myself and did the same thing. Um, I, think, I think what, describe, I think the, the factory farming thing is what is interesting. If, if, describe a farm, first of all, and you, you talk about that. Well, everybody has a mental image of what a farm is. You know, and if you were to ask people, ask around, if I were to ask you, words that come to mind immediately are probably grass, soil, sunshine, farmers. Pitchfork. Pitchfork, manure. Um, and uh, none of these things have anything to do with farming now in America. So more than 99% of animals that uh, are raised for meat are, are raised on factory farms, which means they're raised indoors, usually in windowless sheds. They're fed unnatural diets. They're not allowed to fulfill any of their species-specific instincts, like rooting for a pig, pecking for a hen. Um, they are fed antibiotics, almost all of them, from birth until death, and they're not allowed to live out of their adolescence. So, unfortunately, this image that we have of a farm is, um, is it creates a distance between um, our values and our actions, because we continue to believe that the meat on our plate comes from these idyllic places. Mm -hmm. I wish that it did, but it, but it doesn't. So um, on a chicken farm, for example, now, an egg-laying um, hen farm, more than 99% of hens live this way in these enclosed sheds, um, each given about the amount of space of uh, Mariah Carey's engagement ring, actually. <laughs> uh, and it's something that... Actually, is this is th this is a in a cage, right? This is the size of what a chicken lives its entire life. Well, Was, you know, packed with 30,000 other birds in a room in which there's, um, that. That's the size, but, but cage-free literally is, is almost the same and worse. Well, cage-free is what it sounds like. It's cage-free. So how good is it to be cage-free? Would you like it if someone described your life as cage-free? Not really. Uh, especially if what, what they really meant was, you know, packed with 30,000 other birds in a room in which there's, um, uh, so each, each, each one still has about 67 inches of space, no room to stretch the wings, much less do the things that make a chicken a chicken. Mm -hmm. If we want to know where the things we buy come from, we can find out. You know, if I wanted to know where my glass of grape juice comes from, I could probably get myself an invitation to the orchard. If you became very curious about Mariah's fragrance, she would probably tell us the ingredients and let us see the place where it's manufactured, as she should, because she's proud of it. Um, but meat is this incredible exception. I would challenge... You, I would challenge anybody here today to go to the kind of farm that produces the meat that is served in restaurants and um, sold in supermarkets. And what does that mean if we can't find out? What does it mean that there's an entire industry set up asking for our money, asking us to put their products in our mouths, 
asking for us to feed it to our children, they will not let us see how it's produced. Did, you wrote letters, you tried to go, and there was no response? I did everything I could. I must have sent dozens of letters, mm -hmm. and I explained where I was coming from. Um, a lot of these companies, Tyson in particular, talks about having a family-centered philosophy. Mm -hmm. And so I appealed to that in my letter. I said, family-centered, I'm a new father. I want to know what I'm feeding my kid. Would it be a problem to visit any of your farms? I'll make myself available anytime you're ready for me. I'd love to talk to farmers. I'd love to hear all the stories that, that, that you can make available. I never heard any response, and they weren't exceptional. Mm -hmm. um, it's across the board. What would you say? I think I think one thing is, you know, we're just talking to Jennifer about people are having hard times, you know, feeding their family. So if you can go get a burger for a dollar, if you can feed your kids, and if it's affordable and if it's, you know, readily available, they'll they'll say that that it may may not be possible. They can't afford to eat another way. You can't afford to eat this way. I mean, the the only defense for factory farming is that they're making cheap food for the masses. And in fact, they're making uh, the most expensive food that's ever been made in human history. So you go to the cash register and you pay a certain price, but all the costs are externalized. So, you know, factory farming is the number one um, cause of um, global warming. Um, it's uh, at least 40% more destructive than all transportation combined. So we obsess about, do I buy a Hummer, do I buy a Prius? It doesn't matter. Relatively speaking, it doesn't matter as compared to what you eat. It's the number one cause of air pollution. It's the number one cause of water pollution. It's the number one cause for loss of biodiversity. It's making all of our drugs less effective, antibiotics less effective. It created swine flu. You know, we used to call it swine flu before we could start calling it H1N1. It's no coincidence um, because the meat industry got up in arms about, hey, this is going to make people stop eating pork. Well, if everyone is hysterical about where are the vaccines, why can't I get a vaccine for my kid? Why aren't we asking questions about the root causes? This swine flu that's now an epidemic, it's broken out in 48 of 50 states, um, they've been able to trace it back to a farm in North Carolina, a hog farm. Nobody knows this. Nobody talks about it. We have been told this lie that it came from Mexico because that makes us feel good about ourselves. And how do we know it came from North Dakota and North, North Carolina? Um, scientists have, been, have traced the, the genes of it, traced the, the um, genetic And do we know that? Is that? How do you know that and we don't know that? How do I know it? Because I devoted myself to it. Um, okay. Because I did things that were uncomfortable. I spent a lot of time. But other people know that it came from North Carolina. You, that oh, it's it, document, very, very well documented. Okay. Um, all right, we have to take a break. We got some questions from the audience that, that people that have tried to do this and their doctors told them that they couldn't do it, they have to eat meat and, and uh, things like that. So we'll be back after this and address some questions. some questions. Uh, someone says they used to be a vegetarian. They, they weren't getting enough protein and iron. Doctor said, I have to go back to eating meat. What do you say to that? You have to get a new doctor. I mean, <laughs> the, the American Dietetic Association, which is the gold standard for nutrition in, in our country, says exactly the opposite. They say not only do you not have to seek out more protein, but that vegetarians have a more optimal protein intake than meat eaters. So this is a lie. It's been sold to you, and you should resist it. All right. Um, understand uh, vegans don't eat animals, but what's the deal with not eating eggs or drinking milk? Um, eggs are the worst. I mean, if you're going to give up one thing, if, you're, if your concern is how animals are treated, I would give up eggs before you give up meat, frankly. Um, eggs are, are the animals we were talking about that are um, in these uh, tiny cages are egg-laying hens. And um, milk, they're, um, at least you know, beef cattle get to graze, whereas um, dairy cattle now are confined in, in pens, never get to eat the food that their bodies were made to digest. Yeah, that was kind of surprising to me, too, because um, I think everybody has this image. There's a cow, and there's a guy, and he goes and milks it. There's a bucket, and, you know, he walks around in his, his overalls. And um, there, I think... There is a guy. He's just in commercials. He's uh -huh. not in real life. <laughs> right. I mean, they take advantage of this image. You really have to constantly...